Hey, welcome back viewers. Happy New Year today. I wanted to talk about XQD versus CF Express. Now, if you're not an icon shooter, you might not know what XQD cards are. So let's first go over a brief introduction to XQD. And XQD is a storage medium that looks like this. It's a, roughly the same size as a SD card, but as you can see, it is much more substantial. It's generally made of plastic and metal, where an SD card is just a uh, plastic exterior housing. Um, XQD cards were developed by Sony about 10 years ago, and they've been primarily used in Nikon cameras in the pro and prosumer market, uh, starting with the D4S, then the D5, then the D850 and the D500, and most recently the Z6 and Z7. Uh, Sony has also used the XQD cards in their uh, camcorders, and I believe Phase 1 offers them in one of their cameras as well. However, no other camera manufacturer has really adopted XQD cards apart from those three. So XQD cards are more rugged and reliable than their SD card companions. Um, they generally also come in higher capacities. Theoretically, they could go up to four terabytes. Um, I believe the biggest configuration you can get at the moment is about one terabyte, uh, but there is nothing stopping manufacturers from, from making a two terabyte or four terabyte version. Um, XQD cards are generally much faster than SD cards. Uh, they're a little bit more in line with UHS-2 cards, but even faster than most of those. This uh, Sony XQD card, which is 128 gigabytes, uh, reads at 440 uh, megabits per second and writes at 400 megabits per second. So very fast, very fast, and uh, you could use these uh, specifically for writing 4K video, um, which is why Nikon has adopted these in their cameras, uh, because they are excellent cards for writing and storing 4K video. And also high burst rates and high file sizes. Now much has been made about the Nikon Z6 and Z7 only having one card slot and a lot of people, myself included, will tell you that while it only does have one card slot, the XQD card is an excellent choice for this one card slot because it is much more reliable than SD cards, it is much faster than SD cards, and it has uh, a much more rugged exterior shell, meaning you're less likely to have something go wrong with your card. So um, the reliability numbers for the XQD cards have been much, much higher than SD cards, and um, Nikon made an excellent choice going with these. I would have rather they had two card slots, but if they had to standardize on one, I'm glad they went with XQD. So you may have been hearing about CF Express. Now, what is CF Express? CF Express is another card format, and it is pin for pin compatible and size compatible with XQD. You'll see here these two cards are really exactly the same size and you can stick a, neck, a CF Express card into an XQD card slot and it will fit just fine. Now that doesn't mean that a CF Express card will work in any device that uses XQD. A firmware update will be required to make that CF Express card work in any XQD capable device. And Nikon did just that with the Z6 and Z7 a few weeks ago. They're promising that the D500, D850, and D4S and D5 will get an upgrade that will allow it to read and write CF Express in the near future, but they haven't given a timeline on when that will happen, but I suspect it'll happen fairly quickly now that CF Express cards are hitting the market. So what are the benefits of using CF Express over XQD? Well, right now, there really aren't many. Um, it's just another option for you to have to be able to buy and use in your camera. Theoretically though, new cameras that come out will be able to take advantage of CF Express's faster read and write speeds. Now this CF Express card here from Sony will read at uh, 1700 megabits per second and it will write at 1480 megabits per second. So you can see that's roughly about three times the read and write speed of the Sony XQD card. But that speed is not gonna be uh, able to be uh, used if you have a current camera like a Nikon Z6 or Z7 because those cameras were designed with XQD in mind and their speeds are fixed at what they are currently. So even if you stick a CF Express card that has a theoretical read and write of about 1700 
megabits per second in your camera, that doesn't mean that your camera is going to be able to fully take advantage of that speed. However, new cameras coming down the road will take advantage of the speed, and this means that things like uh, 4K60 will be much more possible as uh, uh, CF Express support is added in the future. Of course, other things are holding that back, like improved processor speeds and being able to um, read and write without generating excessive heat. So th those are other factors that come into play into being able to write more bandwidth video to the card. But generally, the bottleneck in a lot of cameras has been the card itself. And with CF Express, that will no longer be the case. There will definitely be more than enough headroom to write 4K60 and probably 8K in the future. So if you have a Nikon Z6 or Z7, should you be moving to a CF Express card now? There's really no benefit and there's actually one downside. So while your camera can read and write CF Express cards, your card reader, if you use one like this, probably can't. Um, you're going to be very unlikely to find a card reader that was designed for XQD that will be upgraded to be able to read and write CF Express. Now that doesn't mean you can't buy a CF Express specific card reader, which you can. Um, they're about $50 and there's a few on the market and I'll have one soon and be testing it and give you a full breakdown of what the read and write speeds are of getting an XQD data off of a card versus a CF Express data. Um, but you will have to buy a new card reader if you want to pull those images off without using the USB cable to your camera. So no real benefits at the moment, just another option for Nikon Z6 and Z7 users to, uh, to look into so you won't be held hostage to the XQD card prices, although I gotta say the CF Express prices are really just about exactly the same as the XQD cards. That will probably change as more and more manufacturers start to make CF Express cards, but for now you can't really expect a big price increase or decrease. So what do you think? CF Express is it the wave of the future? Are you looking forward to using a CF Express card in your Nikon camera? If so, let me know down below in the comments. And if you like this video, please click the thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please click subscribe. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. And I'll see you in the next video.